Deborah Bay. Welcome to my studio uh, in Houston, Texas. And I'm um, so glad that you've joined us so I can talk about a little bit about my series, Traveling Light, which I had so much fun doing. It was just really um, a great experience to find these small optical objects and discover how interesting the laws of physics are in terms of how light travels across these objects. So this series uh, started after I was uh, looking at some of the, uh, looking and thinking about some of the Bauhaus images, particularly, the, particularly those by Maholi Naj, who did some light studies, uh, mostly photograms, uh, but all in black and white. And I thought, so many of the light studies that have been done have been only in black and white. And I thought it would be interesting to add the element of color so that you could see more specifically in a way how the light actually moves across different surfaces. So uh, in this particular image, which is called the calculus of variation, I actually did uh, pre-plan exactly how the uh, images would be set up and there would be one variable which would be a change in the, in the uh, round lens. The, the prism and the light would stay the same. So I had several different lenses which were convex, concave, or combinations like double convex, double concave. So when I um, took the images, it was interesting to see just uh, the way the light would catch different surfaces and create these different shadows and colors on uh, the lens. So then I rotated them around to get a little bit of movement across the image. So I mentioned that there was sometimes a bit of serendipity involved in uh, this whole process. So uh, for the next couple of images, uh, they actually started at La Mexicana. Uh, over breakfast with a friend and so we were sitting there eating our tacos and an old friend of hers who she hadn't seen in a few years comes in and uh, they start catching up the old friend says she's in town to uh, close out this uh, warehouse for a glass showroom so my ears perk up and I'm thinking oh well this has some real possibilities so I go out to the warehouse and uh, come back with a few armloads of things and uh, including one like this and I start uh, putting them on the light table and experimenting with the lights. And uh, then I put a lens in front of it and here's my homage to Valsarelli. And then another piece which I picked up there, which um, was interesting to put behind a couple of lenses and prisms, and it looks like they're floating behind the uh, setup. Okay, so in this particular piece, the bold orange is just so wonderful. It, it has so much exuberance in it that I think it, it creates this wonderful sense of abundance in the space that it occupies. It's also a very, another very happy piece, and um, I love to pick it up and look at it. And there's also a matching, uh, a kind of a companion piece, which is in a much quieter uh, blue tone. And so they're a great pair together. Sometimes the work will come together uh, in post-production and editing. So I had a couple of images on the computer and I was looking at them. And all of a sudden I thought, well, there really are no rules here. So what would happen if I turn this around and all of a sudden there was this wonderful sinuous curve called the line of beauty. So my process basically uh, involves going to the studio, putting on some good music, following my intuition and just letting the magic happen. Well, let me just give you a little bit of uh, context and tell you a little bit about my background. I spent about 25 years working in journalism and public affairs. And some people have asked me, well, how, how did you make the, the leap from uh, that kind of work into this fairly abstract kind of photography? And I suppose, uh, in a way, doing public affairs has its own um, 
kind of interpretation. And also, uh, my other answer would be uh, from T.S. Eliot, who says that uh, humankind can't bear too much reality. So I like doing uh, constructed photography, which can suggest, uh, as in my uh, first major body of work, can suggest something which is appears to be something else. That was a uh, uh, series of images which were based on, uh, it, was, it was actually the inside of the computers, and I had um, taken apart a computer and uh, was intrigued with it, didn't know exactly uh, what I was going to do with it, but started experimenting, and the more I looked at these uh, old circuit boards, which were then much bigger than, than what we have now. Uh, but they looked kind of like these uh, kind of cityscapes. And so I lit them very darkly and put small figures on them. And uh, the result was a series called uh, Siberia, like CYB, uh, and um, kind of suggests this dystopian future with too much technology. Another series of work, which was called The Big Bang, I photographed bullets which had been shot into bulletproof plexiglass. And so the, the, um, the bullets were actually captured within these panels of plastic and they looked like small exploding uh, universes. So it's another kind of alternate reality, something which uh, is was a very physical phenomenon which suggested something totally different from what it was. So with this particular series, the, um, I think what intrigued me was the, just the observation of physical phenomenon to see how light can move in so many different ways and how the color will mix in the background. Um, there were just all these wonderful chromatic geometries. You could see how the light would move around the rim, how it would just, you know, follow one surface, but the layer behind it would have, would pick up a different color. And it was just such a fun experience to see how the physical world works.